Okay, this is just showing a simple little trick for using cross-references to set up the page numbers in your contents page in a book. So you'll be able to set up a contents page that will automatically update its page numbers for you. So if you're working on a publication where the chapter numbers, the chapter titles aren't going to change that frequently, but there's a lot of editing going on within the documents within each chapter itself, then you'll find that the page numbers can shuffle around a bit. And the proper normal way of generating a contents page in InDesign requires you to generate a completely new contents page each time. The page numbers in the contents page that InDesign gives you aren't active. They don't update when the page numbers within the document change. So this is just using a simple little trick of abusing cross-references to give you that ability. Right, so getting into it anyway. I've got here just a fake dummy document with a few fake dummy chapters in it. And as you can see, the contents page already has the chapter titles listed. Sometimes you may have that supplied to you in a manuscript, so it saves you having to generate it yourself. But obviously the page numbers aren't going to be in there. Or if they are, they're definitely not going to be correct. Um, also, if you use InDesign's contents page generation tool, it'll give you basically the same thing. It will give you page numbers, but if the book changes, if the number of pages for each chapter changes, they're not going to update. You'll have to actually regenerate the entire contents page. So it's good in some situations. This is handy in other situations, that's all. Okay, so it's incredibly simple. All we do is just jump in here, which is, where have they moved it to? Here we go, cross-references under type and tables. Okay, so we've got our cross-references panel open. All we need to do is basically just insert a cross-reference. You can do it that way. You can do it that way. It does the same thing. All right. Now, we have a specific style, and this is, by the way, a good idea in any book that you set up. Always use a specific style for your chapter headings. A specific paragraph style, and don't use it anywhere else, because you'll need that in order to generate the contents page using InDesign's built-in contents page tool. And it's also very useful for this technique. So you can see here I have a paragraph style called chapter heading. And if I select that in here, I can straight away see these are all my chapter titles. So here we are. I'm on chapter one. I want to link to chapter one. I link to chapter one. It's that straightforward. Um, I could also dynamically in include the chapter title if I wanted to. In this case, I haven't set it up that way. So I'm just going to jump down here to page number. You can go in here, you can edit the cross-reference formatting. So here is where the cross-reference variable is. That's just the page number tag. You can add whatever you want before that, or you can, what I normally do, is just delete it completely. And when you hit OK on that, there's your page number. So repeat the process. Chapter heading, you want chapter two. It should stay where it was before. It'd be nice to be able to dynamically do this, but you only have to do it once and then it's set up correctly. And then we've got about the author page, so we can link to that as well because I've used the same heading for that. And so there you are. So what happens now is you can see we've just got sequential pages because this is just a demo. If you were, for example, to come back and go, okay, I need to update the content of this chapter, for example this chapter is now going to have you know, much more text in it. So let's grab some text, paste that in there, and that has now jumped across to the next page, which means that all of our subsequent chapters are on different pages now. Numbers have all changed. So ordinarily, that would mean that you'd need to return to the contents page tool in InDesign and regenerate your entire contents page. The reason why this isn't a good idea is because it's extremely difficult to configure that. And often what will happen is that you'll get output from that tool, which will still need to be manually edited. So if you have to constantly keep changing the content of your chapters and the page numbers keep shuffling around as you're going along, yeah, obviously you're not going to do the contents page until you're finished anyway for that very reason. But if you have, for example, 
corrections or additions being made to your text for subsequent reprints of a document. It's very useful to be able to just leave the program to handle the page numbers because if you've got something with you know 50 or so chapters that can get very difficult to manage very quickly. And so as you can see here chapter 1 still where it was originally but chapter 2 and all subsequent chapters have now all shifted. And this will also work if you're using a book document in InDesign. So if you have a book file set up with multiple InDesign documents in that for each chapter, it'll still work. The technique is still valid. But what will happen is when you go to output your document, you'll get a warning message telling you that you've got cross references that need to be updated. So it just makes it that little bit safer so that you don't run the risk of outputting a document, printing it and discovering at the end that nobody noticed that the page numbers had reshuffled and the contents page hadn't been updated. So it's a little bit of a safety, a little bit of a catch-all. Um, yeah, that's actually really about all there is to it. It's incredibly simple, handy little trick to have. Um, yeah, abusing cross-references. There you go.